Hello, well, welcome back to the channel. It's been a minute since I've built something or even did a video on capacitor. Basically, a mobile app built on web and deployed with capacitor, but I'm back. So, this is another video that talks about creating a mobile application with capacitor and Tailwind and Daisy UI to create the custom components. The emphasis of this video is going to be on integrating Daisy UI's drawer component, which is this thing sliding in, sliding out, navigating to different pages, appropriately handling the menu button in the top title bar, navigating down into child pages, and coming back up. And how I got this all to work based on the information provided. I cover setting up Daisy UI in another video, so I'm not going to cover it here. Also, the directions are pretty straightforward. Just a note here, I'm using, I jumped ahead and I'm using Daisy UI 5.0. I'll stop here and say please make sure you like, subscribe. I haven't done a lot of videos on Ionic or Capacitor or any of that stuff because folks just aren't really watching them. If I, you know, if if you like this type of content, it's really important that A, you like the video, and B, you actually watch it for more than a second. Take the time to leave a comment, like it or something, so that I know people care. All right, so first let's take a look at the drawer component. Well, here, since we're on installation, we'll take a quick look at it. It's a lot easier to install Days UI now in version four. It's really this simple, you just add the plugin. And also, if you look at um, the Tailwind install, also for 4.0, it's way easier than it was in the past. All right, so that's the install. And now let's, and let's take a look at the component. So if we jump down here to the drawer component, gives us a little bit more room. As someone who comes from Ionic Framework, like one of the biggest challenges that I had when I started to use Daisy UI was basically writing the controller part. When you get a component from Ionic Framework, it, it gives you the UI and it gives you the controller part to actually manage the interaction with the object that you're creating. So if you look here, you get this drawer component and I can open and close it, but all the important stuff, which is really how do I route when I click on this? How do I route when I click on this? How do I toggle to open and close the dialog? Like how do I manage the user interaction with it is not provided. So this is really all you get. Plus the other thing is that you notice here in the preview, I'm I'm just clicking on things. Like it's not like how do I integrate the page this is going to go to? Like none of that is there. So that's what I've done in this project template and this code that I'll walk through is I've taken the user interface provided by Daisy and added the logic to make it function properly. So that's what this video is about. So let's go back to the app and kind of start from the beginning. A couple of things that you'll want to know is not only did I integrate Daisy in this, I also, while I was at it, I integrated Superbase login and functionality. So let me just sign out and kind of start at the top. All of these components are built with Daisy UI, and I will, at the end of the video, I'll run the thing on an iOS device. You can see how this same source code is utilized to deploy an application on iOS. The Android packets, I mean, it's kind of right, the Android libraries are included in the project, so if you're an Android person, you should be able to take the same application and deploy it on your Android device. All right. So I have sign up and sign in included here, but I'm just going to sign in as my user. Now I'm authenticated. It's set up. It's saving the authenticated state and, and reloading the user. And I've already gone through the navigation of the pages. Here's how I'm loading the data in from the user. Let's get, let's get to the code now. I've been kind of rambling on through the demo. I'll just start at the top. So we have our main TS. Well, actually, the top top is you need to set your environment variables to get access to Superbase. I'm not going to cover the Superbase setup. There's tons of videos on that. But here's how I'm getting my application up and running, including Superbase. Initialized app is what fires everything off. It's kind of wrapped in this async function because there's asynchronous things I need to do with startup to make sure that everything is right. Specifically, this on-off state change, which is 
checking to see if I have a current user. That's really all this is doing. And I have my auth store. If I get a session back from this, I add the user to my auth store and I set the flag to auth store is true. Otherwise, I set it to false. And then the other thing I do by default also is I check the session when the application starts to determine if I have a user. And then again, I get the auth store, I set the user, and I set authenticated to true. I don't fire up the router or mount the app until this is done because I don't want the app to, I don't want you to see the flash where it kind of goes to the home page and switches back to the authentication page because it doesn't have a user session. And since I started talking about stores, I'm using Pina here. And let's take a look at my store. It's my auth store, it's pretty straightforward. I have this external library which handles all my calls to Superbase. So basically the initialization, the login, the logout, and the create user. In my state, I keep my user and just my flag. And then here are my actions, which calls the sign in, calls the sign out, calls the sign up. Clearly better error handling would be nice, but I'm leaving that as an exerciser for the user. All right, so we covered main. Let's take a look at what's going on in App View, because App View is where we first start to see the drawer component, which is what this is really all about. So, a couple of things here. I created a composable to manage interacting with the drawer. So, it tells me if the drawer is open, it toggles it between open and close, and I have these functions for closing the drawer and opening the drawer. Actually, I said it backwards. Opening a drawer and closing a drawer. I probably could use a toggle in here, but I just wanted to completely flush out the functionality of this um, composable. Let's take a look at this composable. Use drawer. So I have my flag, which lets me know this current state of the drawer. Clearly my toggle just toggles it between open and close. Open sets it to open. Close sets it to close. And that's it. It's in this composable so I can have access to it from anywhere inside the application where I need to manipulate the drawer. So let's go back. So that's the composable. Let's take a look at the component. And you can see that the way I'm managing the state of whether the drawer is open or closed is through this composable, I get this flag of open or closed and it's what gets passed in to the drawer to know if it should be opened or closed. All right, so let's take a look at my drawer component. Drawer component. All right, so we have this is open flag, and then we have these events that get emitted. A toggle event, an open event, and a close event gets emitted from the drawer. We need to get the current router to be able to change pages based on what item you click on in the drawer and we need route information to kind of manage this, the ability here to make sure that the active drawer is highlighted here, you can see. So that's what we need these guys for. I spent some time trying to get the safe area to work properly, and then finally I just gave up and I'm just, I'm cheating and here's how I'm managing it. Based on the platform, I'm computing the padding on the top of the app and the bottom of the app. So that's what this code is doing. This handle click is a function that's called, and you'll see when I get below in the code, I pass in the to string, which is basically the route I want to navigate to. It emits a toggle to close the menu, and then it pushes to the appropriate path, which is passed in as two. So when I click about, it toggles close, and it routes to the appropriate place. This is used to track the property that comes in, and so the way that, this is, this is daisy stuff, the way that the drawer is open and closed is using this input checkbox here. And so when I want to close the drawer, I'm getting the reference to it. And then I'm changing its state from checked to unchecked. So that's how I open and close the drawer. And then when the state of the drawer changes, I also want to emit the toggle event from my drawer so that it knows it needs to close itself. So that's what's happening here. So this watch is watching the property that gets passed in to the drawer. And if it changes, it knows it needs to close the drawer. 
That's what's happening. This is the slot that holds all the content for what's going to be in the drawer. And so that is the page that's going to get rendered. So let's go back a minute and take a look at the app view. So the slot for the drawer is this router view. And the router view is where we're going to render pages based on the route that the user selects here. So that's what the slot is for. This is where the page that is selected in the menu will get rendered. And then now all the rest of this is the actual drawer content. A lot of CSS stuff in here, so it's hard to see, but not CSS, uh, Tailwind. Important thing to note here is you see this label. This label covers the whole drawer overlay, so that's basically this gray area, so that when I click in it, I'll have to take a look at that because what's supposed to happen is that if I click in this gray area here, that's what this thing is. It's supposed to emit a close event and then it's supposed to toggle the drawer closed. I'll try to fix this before I push the final source code up. But that's what this drawer label is for. And then now we have the title for the menu and then here's where we iterate through the drawer entries. And the drawer entries, I have a separate configuration file, which is right here where I import it. So let's go to config, navigation, and you just see I have the path, the label, class that I want to pass in, and a specific icon that makes up what is rendered here. And then this is a button that wraps the whole thing that when clicked we call the handle link click which will navigate us and do everything else it needs to be, do but I just want to cover this 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 span here this is the class that you want to apply specifically to the text that appears in this area because if you saw here in navigation you could pass in a class name so that's what's going on there And that's it. The important part here is how we pa we pass in the slot, the information that we want to be rendered, and then now you'll see when we go and look at the router how this is all set up. So the basic idea is that, let's go back to app, is that the drawer wraps the content that gets rendered. That's what's happening here. All right, so we covered main app, all store, touched on the Superbase Live. Let's just take a quick look at it. It's really just grabbing the Superbase client for us. Uh, we spoke on navigation. We spoke on the use drawer composable. Let's take a look at some of the components that make up what we're doing in the drawer. So if you look at oh, the nav bar component, we'll get back to that. So the nav bar component is, I tried my best to centralize the activity for this top component so it knows whether it should use the menu button or you can see when I go to about how it switches to the back button. So that's what this nav component is kind of handling because you can see it has a slot for the left button, it has a slot for the right button, and then it just renders the title there. Now I did notice afterwards that there actually is a nav button component that comes from Daisy UI. I will take a look at trying to integrate that later. I just rolled my own here. And then we have our menu button component. It has to see how I have to use my composable to get access to the toggle so that I can have the menu button when clicked toggle the menu open and close. That's this guy up here. And then we have our back button here very similar to the menu button. We need access to the router here. When it's clicked, we want to kind of navigate the user back. And so the last part, which is the magic part, is the router. So let's go to router. So I did go down the route of trying to nest routes. 
this one might ask why on my about page why and then when I click to contact us why wouldn't that be a nested route I could have made it a nested route but it would just be unnecessary complexity I can accomplish what I need to accomplish without nesting the route there's no shared UI or anything like that which would which might be a justification to nest the routes. So I just laid everything out flat at the top. All right, so we, let's kind of walk you through the flow of this. When the app starts up, clearly it's gonna try, I'm not redirecting it anywhere in startup. So it's gonna to try to hit the index page first. But I have the familiar pattern of where I set this meta and I set the required auth is true on my home page, which means that it's going to check for authentication before routing. So if you come down to this before each, I grab my auth store, I check if the user is authenticated. If this page requires auth and you're not authenticated, then I redirect to the sign-in page. So that's how you get to the sign-in page. For all the other pages, they're just straightforward routes. These routes are the same routes that you saw in this, um, where was it? This navigation config. These are the same routes that we have in our router with the component. Some of them I'm just showing how you can lazy load the component. And then all that's happening is if, when we click on a specific route, because the drawer is wrapping this whole page, right? And I've added the um, the the uh, hold on the outlet the router outlet. Well, here yeah, they call it a router view. Here, the drawer wraps it. I select one of the pages, and then when I render it, it gets rendered inside the drawer component. So the drawer component is kind of sitting on top of everything, and the pages are child are child components to the drawer. And that's it. I just wanted to walk through it. You probably want to take the code and look through it yourself, then go back to the video for some reference. But that's kind of how this thing works. And then the last part is, for all the doubters out there, let's deploy this thing onto a device and see what we get. Since I am using Ionic, the sorry, the Ionic plugin, I can just go here to my uh, panel and select iOS and click play. Actually, I probably should build it first. So let me cancel that and build it. It doesn't need to be built, but I'll go ahead and build it anyway. So that's basically gonna rebuild the thing, package everything up. And then now I'm gonna run it on an iOS device. It's gonna ask me to pick my iOS device I want to pick one that I've run before so it doesn't take too long. So I'm just going to build everything, sync over the files it needs to sync, load in all the native pods, pods for, for um, iOS, and deploy to my emulator. So let's wait for this to finish. All right, so the app started up. Let's log in. I'm in my app, navigation, nice and smooth. Looks just as good as it did on mobile. And there you go. You have your web application deployed and running on a native device without using React Native, without using any of the other tools leveraging your web skills to deploy an application on a device. Hopefully you find this helpful. Check out the template. Let me know if there's other interesting things you'd like to see. Take care. Bye now.